think about the advantages to building a place where nobody can deny the ads. You get to decide what ads are going to be run. Think about a, a, a way to do business where you'll always get approved on Google or Facebook or whatever media you're, uh, you want to advertise on to drive people back to home because you can, you, all you have to do is advertise content, content that people are interested in, content that you know they'll be interested in because data tells you that people are interested in it. That's what I want to convince you of. And Welcome to the Ed O'Keefe Show. Transform your mind, accelerate your business, energize your body, and inspire the world. Now here is your host, Ed O'Keefe. In this episode of the podcast, you're going to hear a segment of a presentation done by Roland Frazier. Thank you. Yeah, I, it's um, how many of you? How many of you have an authority site now where you post content regularly and have visitors come regularly? Just a few, right? Okay. It's. It, I want at the end of this, I've done my job. If I've convinced you that you should have one and you decide that you're going to do this. Um, how many people have had a Facebook or Google account shut down or an ad denied because of subject matter? Right? Al almost everybody. And when that happens, you are out of business if your only business is advertising on Facebook or advertising on Google. And I was talking with Ed about it. It's kind of interesting that in the, in the real world, we have physical stores that people come to and have the chance to browse around and, and interact with staff and find out if there's stuff that they like. And experiential stores are really doing well, like the, the is it Bass Pros and Kabbalahs and things like that. Cabela's, Kabbalah is a different, whole different subject. But uh, <laughs> if, you've, if you've got no place for them to go and all you've got is a couple of landing pages or a couple of offers, then if something happens in the world that causes the other media to go away, you end up with nothing. And you also miss the opportunity to have them come and look around and spend time and develop a relationship with you and then buy more stuff from you. So if you've got an authority site, all that changes. You have a place for them to come. You have a place where you can segment them. You have a place where as the things that they're interested in change, like if it's just a site about gut health, right? If, it's, if that's all it is, then for the moment in time that they're interested about that, then they'll come and spend time and they'll go away. But if you don't have something broader that is more like wellness or around a topic that somebody that's interested in gut health might be interested in, then you've lost them once that momentary interest in that one particular thing ends. So think about the advantages to building a place where nobody can deny the ads. You get to decide what ads are are going to be run. Think about a, play, a, a way to do business where you'll always get approved on Google or Facebook or whatever media you're, uh, you want to advertise on to drive people back to home because you can, you, all you have to do is advertise content, content that people are interested in, content that you know they'll be interested in because data tells you that people are interested in it. That's what I want to convince you of. And there's a whole bunch of stuff, by the way, um, if you want to, like the how-to, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on because it's tedious to tell you how to be a SEM rush ninja, right? But if you go to my slide share, um, I've got a 7,000 word report on exactly how step by step to do the data side of this. Um, there's a webinar I just did with SEM rush last week. You can go watch that. Um, and I've got another one coming out on how to use filters and stuff like that. But all that to me is, is just the how to, and I don't even think any of you should really be doing it, but somebody should. I just happen to find it interesting. But I wanna talk about native commerce and as it applies to the supplement industry, right? So all native commerce is, is an evolution of the newspaper, right? The newspaper exists, the authority site is the newspaper, you run ads, and then the people who are on your site can buy. And what's cool is about native commerce, I think, is that you can own both. You can own the ads under a different brand and you can own the newspaper under a different brand. And the perfect example of this, we talked about at Traffic and Conversion, was Thrill List buying Jack Threads. Thrill List aggregated the attention of a bunch of men, I think 18 to 24 or 18 to 34, something like that. And then um, they built from two to four to eight million. And then they bought the clothing company Jack Threads. Did not change the brand name of Jack Threads to Thrill List, Thrill List Wear, right? They kept the brand name and then sales two years later were $100 million. So that's the, the power, I think, of doing this. And, um, 
You guys, hopefully all of you know what we do at Digital Marketer. We drive millions of people. We have multiple authority sites. Um, we had about four million unique views last month, uh, and that's growing, and we have a lot of new properties that we're incubating right now. So we've done this a lot. But think about if instead of owning a bunch of offers and landing pages, you owned Life Extension, right? And you had 1.3 million visitors. Or you own Natural News, Ed talked about yesterday, and you had 5.2 million visitors. Or Health.com, 7.9, or better yet, Bodybuilding.com with 26 million. If you have these kinds of sites, then you really have a lot of power. Because you're building email lists which have value and which you can rent, and Dave can help you do that, or uh, people like it, the Wayland Agency, right? The, uh, and we make about, uh, I think organically on Survival Life, email, uh, email list rentals are about $144,000 a month for us. So um, there's a lot of value there, but then you've got people who are coming to the site, and everyone who comes to the site gets pixeled, like Tanner talked about for uh, retargeting. And we've found, and I'll show you, uh, everybody that comes to our site uh, for survival is worth about 33 cents. So just driving people to the content of the site, just because they showed up, they're worth 33 cents to us, right? So the more people we can drive, the better. And then you still have all kinds of other sources of income. As a matter of fact, I just read an article about a, a lady that started a fashion blog a couple years ago who now has been approached by a major brand to do a line of cosmetics. And she's been approached by retail stores to go into the retail stores too. So instead of you having to go and beg, put my supplements in Walmart and uh, Target where they've had some challenges recently, right? They will come to you and say, hey, you already have this cool property that already exists and you've got a whole bunch of people coming to it and we want to, as a brand, get in front of your audience and we want to have you create products for us. That's a big, big difference. And it's a bigger game than, I think, just having one or two products. So Ryan said at TNC, media is anything that aggregates the attention of a definable market segment at a specific location at a predictable time, right? That's all these things that we're talking about are. And there's a life cycle to them. There's, and this is from our funnels, our uh, content marketing certification program that we just launched last week. Uh, but it tells you all of, and you guys will have these slides, so, and a couple of the tools I'll show you too. So, uh, but it just shows you that different, different goals and objectives can be had at the top of the funnel, the middle of the funnel, and the bottom of the funnel, and you don't have the opportunity to do that if you're just running an offer. You have a funnel, but you don't have the ability to have the continuity of having the people's interest, right? So this is, this is kind of what it boils down to too, is, so the Facebook ads and the Google Display Network and the drops that you do and everything else, those are the outposts, but you still always got home base that people can come to. And that's the magic, I think, of having the authority site. So you have all of the things that you heard about throughout this entire uh, uh, couple of days that you've been here, Facebook and all the different places that you can drive content, that you can drive traffic from, going to content. The content gets cookied, with a retargeting pixel and then we run it on whatever social channels. So basically, we're coming from here to here, back out to here again, and then back to buy. And it's just a constant cycle of that, right? But the other thing that you get when you have a media property is you really get to hyper-segment your market and find out exactly what they're interested in. So as they look at different content, the way that we do it is we change the slug, the actual URL, on every page, and we have uh, 15 in one of our sites, 15 different kinds of content, right? So in the supplement business, maybe you've got some people that are interested in gut health, and some people that are interested in weight loss, and some people that are interested in muscle gain, and some people that are interested in fat burning, and so you have a slug on every article that's related to one of those particular topics, because they're gonna be several, that ends with fat burning, right? That ends with that particular category. Now you're segmenting everybody based on what they're reading and instead of only having the opportunity to show them one offer and then guess what upsell might be appropriate, you can show them an upsell that's dynamically determined and you can retarget dynamically and rotate the different offers that they're interested in. So if gut health guy is interested in uh, fat burning, right, and, um, and then goes out to another site, you can rotate fat burning and gut health gut health ads based on the behavior that they've had on your site. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. It's really, really a big deal because you, ha you, can, you can stay with them as their interests change. And if they come back to your site and start reading different things or they start reading only about fat burning, then let's show them fat burning offers because we're showing them dynamically what their interest tells us the data, again, right? What the data tells us that we ought to be showing them offer wise. And what you end up with is all these retargeting lists. So these are, this is just a slice of retargeting lists from one of our sites and there's lots of people on them, 200,000, 182,000, 156,000, right? Lots and lots of people. And the more they come back to your site too, the more you get to repixel them so your six months that you have to go and chase them around continues to renew all the time. And you effectively have all these big email lists that aren't email lists, that they didn't opt into, but have 100% delivery because you know that they can be displayed. It's actually, we were talking about this too, we pay uh, about a half million dollars a year for our email platform, right? And we send about a billion emails, but we have to pay a half million dollars to do that. So the retargeting cost can actually be less expensive to us than email, right? Which a lot of us think of as being free. And one of the big things I think that's important is to really, really understand keywords. And I, I will challenge most of you to tell me how much time and how carefully you've researched your keywords. There is uh, a guy named uh, SEO Nick who offers a program. It's $127. It's called Master Keyword Research. I think none of you should go through it, but you should all buy it and give it to whoever's going to do your keyword research. Uh, he will do it for you. He charges $3,000. It would totally be worth it. Um, but what you'll find by going through this way, and this is really deep research and pivot tables and all kinds of stuff that you don't want to spend your time doing. I happen to find it incredibly interesting. But... Um, but uh, is definitely. Called master Keyword Research? It's called uh, Master Keyword Research, seonick.com. And it's a fantastic program. I'm sorry? Is it .net? Yep, you're right. So uh, the goal then is how can you build a really strong base of content? And this is just drilling down. We found that one of our keywords is paracord, which you wouldn't really know in the survival market unless you happen to know that paracord was big, right? So then we do paracord and there's all these keyword terms with high search volume and we build a pillar post around that one particular topic and then we have our little supporting posts from all the other words, all the other search words that come uh, under it. So right, so we've got paracord as our pillar and then we've got paracord bracelet projects and a whole bunch of other things underneath that. And that's how you build strong SEO into your site at the page level. And all the authority from all these things that people are looking for on the lower support level levels will go up to the harder to rank keyword like Paracord itself and then you'll end up ranking for that. And I mean, it's, it's not terribly different than you've done for years and years and years if you've been doing SEO, except now there's so much data that's available to tell you exactly what all those things should be, right? And this is a tool which, oh, this is just an Excel spreadsheet, which I'll call a tool. Um, that you guys are welcome to have. I'll give it to Ed, and it's how we plan our pages around the, su the support and pillar posts. And then it's creating content. And so uh, we had a conversation, we had a conversation just yesterday about other people's content and is it evil and wrong and bad, and you haven't done it because you feel like, you know, that's kind of stealing from other people maybe, but you're not sure. So I, I, I think uh, curated content for us has outperformed consistently the original content that we've created at a significantly lower cost of creation, right? <coughs> Curated content doesn't take long. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of ways to create great content and you'll see that we always do attribution back to whoever created the original content, which means all of our traffic is exposed to their site where they, where they created the original content. So I think it helps them. So that's, that's kind of my argument for it, always a tribute, right? But, um, and, and I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these, and again, the detailed stuff is, uh, we have uh, posts on it and everything, but find a popular video from an expert, embed it in your site, and then have a reaction, right? This is, this is uh, the holy field, I mean, excuse me, yeah, this is the holy field Pacquiao fight, and um, I think holy field's a jerk, and here's why, and then you'll have all kinds of comments, but easy to find. Uh, compile a list of stats that other people have done, and then comment on it. Uh, do interviews, compile interesting quotes from different people, 
ask three experts the same question and then aggregate it and then very good chance that they will send out this post to all of their people, giving you all kinds of traffic. Uh, do lists and viral posts. And again, like I said, if you go to, the, go to the slide shares that I've got, the detail on how to do all this is there. I'm really much more interested in you deciding that you need to do this. Uh, find top performing YouTube videos with millions of views, embed them, link to the original video. You can cut them up into screenshots and then link out to the original video. Round up posts, for, which are the 26, 36, uh, 25 ideas things. Uh, Drew talked about that a little bit. Linking out again to the original things. And then how do you keep track of it all? We use just an Excel spreadsheet. And so we've got uh, what you can't see, unfortunately, and it wouldn't let me screen capture it, uh, is these are all drop down boxes. So the blog, uh, the post type there, there are uh, 53 different kinds of post types. And, uh, and I'll give them all to you. And there are four different ways to present each of those, thereby giving you 212 different kinds of things you can put on your blog, right? So you do one, you can repurpose it into four different formats, and you end up with four times as many. So this is a drop down, uh, and again, you guys can have this. There's a drop down of all the different kinds of posts. Then there's the vehicle of what we're going to do. Is it going to be an infographic, a video, or whatever? It's going to, and then we're going to have the category, which we're going to have determined from our keyword research. And then there's going to be uh, what offer is associated with the post because we always want there to be an offer, whether it's an exit offer or an offer in the middle or something. Where is it going to drive people down into the funnel based on where they started out? And then um, the headline. That's it. And when we use, uh, well, actually, I'll talk about, I think I'll talk about that next. So here's, here's our infographic of uh, all the different blog posts, okay? And again, you, you guys can have this. It's all the different kinds of blog posts that you can do. Um, and what you end up from doing this is ranking for a whole bunch of keywords for one piece of content that people are searching for. So this one is uh, 36 paracord projects for preppers. For us, it's uh, 80,450 combined search volume for 487 keywords that all rank on page one. Okay. Now, the article that I'm going to publish next week will show you how to take all of these, because I'm just doing the case studies now and I've got enough data to do it, to take all of, to determine what are all the keywords that you're ranking three to 10 for and how do you move them up into one and two where the number of clicks is significantly higher. And it's a really cool way to do that. This episode is sponsored by Marine D3. If you want 24 hour antioxidant protection while giving your brain, eyes, heart, and overall energy a jolt of long lasting nourishment, then Marine D3 is for you. This is my number one top selling health product that I've sold over 500,000 bottles. And right now, 80% of our sales come from repeat customers. Marine D3 can flood your cells with an abundance of new antioxidants and nutrients that fights and repairs damage done to the cells during exercise, everyday living, and the natural breakdown that occurs as we age. After 15 years of research and over $39 million spent on clinical studies, a renowned biochemist has found one of the world's greatest antioxidants. It's called CNLP hiding deep below the ocean surface. I took CNLP, combined it with a little known omega-3 called calam calamarine, as well as vitamin D3, so that you can get maximum benefit all in one supplement. I'd like to give you the first bottle absolutely free. I just ask that you pay shipping and handling. At edokeefshow.com forward slash free bottle, I'll have a mini presentation that will share more about the supplement and why people are raving about it. Most importantly, it'll show you exactly how you can get it shipped out to you today just for shipping and handling. This episode is brought to you by Dormant Forces Insider. If you would like monthly big business breakthroughs, insider marketing strategies that actually work, and mindset secrets of multimillionaires sent directly to your door so you can have them in your hands and you can apply them, then this is for you. Now, you can test drive my Dormant Forces Insider Silver Membership for just one month free. If you love it, we know you'll stay with it and let it keep you in the loop of what's working inside my businesses and the other dozens and dozens of businesses that I mentor. Why would you go at it all on your own when you can use other people's experience than just replicate what works? Anyhow, right now you can test drive the membership for just $1 plus a few bucks shipping and handling, 
by going to edokeefshow.com forward slash dormant forces. That's edokeefshow.com forward slash dormant forces. And thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the podcast. You can find the show notes for this episode as well as all the other podcast episodes by heading on over to edokeefshow.com. If you would, please go subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and leave a rating and review. Rating and reviews truly are the best way for you to show your appreciation for the show because they help more people find out about the podcast and decide if this is the one for them. So until next week, it's time for you to go out there, take action, and inspire the world.